Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 14th of March with me, Patrick Munnerly. In the week ahead, the focus is firmly going to be on central banks and whether or not they are going to stick to the script with respect to interest rate hikes and focusing on inflation over war concerns. We are seeing some moderately positive developments coming out of uh, Eastern Europe with Russia and Ukraine, uh, hopefully seeking diplomatic channels to, uh, to resolve issues there. So in the US this week, it's really going to be about the Federal Reserve who looks set to raise interest, week, uh, raise interest rates with uh, consensus firmly settled on a 25 basis points move after Fed Chair Jerome Powell stated that uh, it's what he would propose and what he would support. It may not be a unanimous decision with a strong likelihood that two Federal Open Market Committee members will vote for a more aggressive 50 basis points hike given inflation is already close to 8% and is soon set to test 9% at a time when the economy is growing and creating jobs in a significant number. However, the uncertainty created by Russia's invasion of Ukraine is likely to lead the majority of the committee backing Powell's motion. They will also be releasing their updated dot plot diagram of individual projections for interest rates. Currently, the median is three 25 basis point hikes in total by year end, but it is likely to end up being much <coughs> closer to the six hikes markets are fully discounting after this update. However, the Fed is likely to emphasize a need to be nimble given the uncertainty and geopolitical backdrop, while acknowledging that surging commodity prices not only poses an upside risk for inflation, but also a downside risk for growth. In terms of the economic data, um, focus will be on retail sales and industrial production this week. Auto sales fell by around 7% in February. So this is quite a bit of a drag and will mean overall positive growth will be difficult to achieve. Nonetheless, even if the sales are flat on the month, the total value of retail spending is going to be uh, towards the 24% higher than February 2020 when COVID hit. I'm expecting a greater weighting of spending to move towards services in coming quarters. But with household finances looking solid and wages rising, this does not mean uh, that we can expect retail sales to fall. Industrial production will be interesting given the surge in oil and gas prices. Rig counts are rising in response and the government is likely to become increasingly willing to permit drilling uh, to ease the financial pain for households. From a technical perspective, the dollar index traded up to uh, the 99.20 monthly projected range resistance. So I'm looking for consolidation now. And whilst we hold above the 98 handle, we are looking for a push through to test the 100 level. And ultimately we're looking for a test of the 100.75 level, which is the 78.6% uh, corrective level versus the 2021 decline. From there, we're watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, looking at a minimum for a retest of uh, the internal projected ascending trend line support coming around 98.40. If we can get through there, then we look for a move down into monthly projected range support and the channel support back down to 96.60. In the Eurozone, uh, this week's data will be about industry, but only covering January and February. With economic developments so driven by the war in the Ukraine at the moment, these production and trade figures will be of little help to give direction to markets. Some information to be taken from them is that the industrial production in January likely continued its rise thanks to a German rebound. So manufacturing was showing strength ahead of the war. Uh, the trade data out on Friday is nominal and currently uh, dominated by commodity price developments. Hardly relevant for the outlook for direction on the Eurozone economy. We really want to look at the geopolitical and market developments at the moment. So from a technical perspective, the euro dollar tested monthly projected range support at 108.40s has held there for now as any corrective moves are capped by the trendline resistance coming in at the 110.70 level. We look for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, looking for a move back down through the prior cycle lows here at 108 en route to a test of the S3 pivot there at 106.60s and the projected Descending trendline support coming in at 106.20s. At this stage, it would really take a close back through the 111.50s to suggest that we are going to move higher and test projected descending trendline resistance coming in at 113.60s. <clears throat> Moving to the UK, 
Uh, markets have concluded that the higher energy prices that have resulted from the war in Ukraine will see the Bank of England double down on its tightening plans. In the short term, investors are probably correct, and we, I'd expect that the bank uh, to hike rates for a third time this week and probably again in May. Policymakers have made it abundantly clear that they want to get some preemptive tightening done to mitigate against their concerns about higher inflation rates becoming more sustained. However, I suspect that the bank will opt for another 25 basis points rate rise this week rather than a larger 50 basis points move. While four out of nine policymakers voted for such a move back in February, the remainder of the committee indicated that they worried such a move would simply add further fuel to market interest rate expectations. Markets are once again pricing six rate hikes this year and comments from officials have offered some modest pushback against those expectations. I uh, think that uh, we are probably looking uh, after a couple more hikes. The committee is likely to pause and put a greater emphasis on the deteriorating growth backdrop. After all, uh, such a sharp rise in oil and gas prices is more likely to be medium-term disinflationary, even if it keeps headline inflation rates higher this year. From a technical perspective, Sterling getting very close to our equality objective at the 130 level as we are supported above 129.60. I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a minimum three-way corrective move back into the 132.70s. At this stage, it would take a close through the projected uh, trend channel support 129.50 to suggest further downside, initially looking for the S3 pivot there at 128.60s. So moving now to Australia. Let's see chart updates here. Apologies there, we had a small issue with uh, updating the chart. So we're now looking at Australia. Uh, coming into Tuesday, we get the Q1 ACCI Westpac Business Survey. Activity uh, is likely to be boosted from uh, Delta reopening, but there are supply headwinds are likely to remain uh, an issue for activity. We also get the RBA minutes, which should provide more color to the RBA board's deliberations. And then heading into Wednesday, we get the Fed Westpac MI leading index. Omicron and Ukraine turbulence are likely to hit that print. Last time out was a 0.4%. We also get February overseas arrivals preliminary looking for Border reopening to and the pre-vid, uh, the pre-COVID aggregation 1.8% month over month. And finally then winding up, uh, the data for Australia on Thursday is the February employment looking for a 40k print there. Predating the floods means that we should see a solid rise in employment. Also looking for the employment rate to hold at 4.1%. Hours worked uh, and a decline in unemployment should keep that print positive. And then Q3 uh, population estimates, Q3 delta hit, could see a dip in the annual contraction there. And we finish up with an RBA bulletin. RBA research articles will be released on Thursday. So from a technical perspective, the Aussie dollar tested the yearly pivot. We've got a rejection there. And we are now looking for another leg to the downside to test this internal trend line support and the monthly projected range support coming in at 7190s. If we take that out on a closing basis, we look for a further extension to the downside to test the 71 level as the next downside objective. Through there, and we'd be looking for a move down to the 6990. At this stage, it would take a close back through 7440s to suggest further upside, looking for a test of the 7550s. And rounding out our review this week, we are looking at Japan. Um, Wednesday, we're going to get in industrial production. Final estimate supply issues are likely to remain a material on head time, uh, headwind. Last time out was a zero, a negative 0.13% print. Uh, Thursday, we get Japan machinery orders looking for negative 2% print there, Omicron likely to restrain capital investment. And then we round out the week in Japan on Friday, uh, February CPI looking for a 1% print there, inflation really near pre-pandemic levels, um, wage growth is going to be a key focus. From a technical perspective, the dollar yen is testing our equality objective and the projected ascending trend line resistance coming in at the 117.70s. I'm looking to, for bearish reversal patterns here to engage on the short side, initially looking for a move back into the 116.30s. If we can get through there, we then look for a, a 
test of the monthly projected range support, 114.80s. And below there, we have this ascending trend line support coming in at the 114, just ahead of the 114 level. At this stage, it would take a close through the ascending trend line resistance here to suggest further upside to test the R3 pivot here at 118.35. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing uh, 14th of March. As always, traders plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.